Welcome to Daily Blast Live. I'm Tori in for Sam, so you can expect some chaos. Ashley Graham is speaking out about that awkward interview with Hugh Grant. Hugh was accused of being rude after he seemed just annoyed and dismissive of Ashley's questions. So TMZ caught up with the model who gave this response. Watch. Where, was there any offense taken to this the Hugh Grant thing that everyone keeps trending about? You know what? My mama told me to kill people with kindness, so there you go. All right, there was another awkward exchange at the Oscars when a reporter got his facts wrong about Kate Hudson. Watch. Kate, you know what it's like Hi, to win an Oscar. Hi, Ronnie Rose. Um, so, I've never won an Oscar. I, I gave you one in my head. <laughs> in my head. But I'm sure it's amazing. Ooh, what do we think about those? I, I think the, uh, the the gentleman we showed second uh, has a little bit more seasoning in this business, and you would think that he would kind of know that. With the Ashley Graham, I think that she handled it well. Uh, I hope she learned from that. Uh, you know, we I know we were a little bit critical of her uh, just because we were saying that she should have been prepared, and that's probably why the Oscar shouldn't be your first gig. But I think... We, what we saw was two different examples of how you can handle somebody making a mistake, how vulnerable they are in that moment, and how gracious she was, and how Hugh just really humiliated her. So, I, you know, removing the person, I think it's how you handle it when you have somebody's kind of dignity in your hands. Mm. It says a lot about you. No, I agree. I think when anytime a, an actor or a singer, whoever's coming on, to, they're coming on to promote something that they have going on, even if it's promoting themselves. I feel like there's an unspoken contract that you have between yeah. the interviewer and the person that's being interviewed. And I can think of times where, especially early in my career, and I still do some silly things, but like early, I would really mess up. You know, like I would say things that were just not supposed to be said. I giggled, I was nervous, there were all these things. And there were people like the Lionel Richies and the Mariah Carey's who would come in and be like, it's okay, where are you from? You know, yeah, like calm kind. me down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there were some other people who were like, that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard, like mm. to your face and you're kind of like. Uh. <laughs> I thought we were gonna get a name. No. Sounded like one was coming out. I'll tell you on later. Oh, okay. uh -huh. Well, this isn't the first time there've been awkward moments on the red carpet. Check out this moment from the 2012 Oscars with Sasha Baron Cohen and Ryan Seacrest. Watch, I hate seeing these. The interesting thing is actually, it's actually made by South Korea. No, 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 sorry. You've got Kim Jong. Hey, you've, got, you've got Kim Jong, Elon. Oh, God. There was also this moment at the SAG Awards in 2014 where Mayim Bialik had to defend her intelligence. I loved this one. Watch this. Being on the Big Bang Theory, yes. how many people, not that you aren't a genius, but how many people think that you can solve calculus at the drop of a hat? Um, I actually was trained in calculus okay. uh, for several years. Yeah, I'm a neuroscientist, so you may not have known that. Yeah, I'm, I, knew you were, I knew you were some kind of scientist. I'm a neuroscientist. Yeah, I can do calculus. Okay. I can do that. <laughs> I knew you were some kind of scientist. <laughs> you were some kind of scientist. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. In fact, I read those books were her college books on the uh, in the Big Bang Theory. They just used her textbooks. Wow. Very cool. Finally, last year, there was this moment with Will Smith. No, not that moment. And Jada talking to Laverne Cox. Check this out. This will hopefully be your year. We love you. Thank you for all the years of joy you've brought us. Thank you. We can't wait for more Red Table Talk and more, <laughs> more entanglements. And <laughs> No more entanglements. No more entanglements. Oh. I'm one of those people that can't watch stuff like that. Oh. What do we think about these moments? The, what do we think? What do you think about the last one, Jeff? <laughs> it just seemed like as an interviewer when you don't have any words and you know something dumb is coming out, so you're like, and we don't want any more of your wife cheating. You're like, why did I say that? <laughs> but it, it's... I don't mean to bring it here, but can certain people say certain yes. things and get away with certain things <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well said you know yeah. what I mean I think certain people get more heat for saying things right and other people had that been me to, to say that to Will Smith and Jada that would have been a lot different right I'm just saying cancelable no, yeah I mean well it would have been different but it's still like I, I think what we keep seeing with all of these is it seems like people that have not done their research 
and because of that, after their first initial question, they don't have anything else in that bucket. So after they go, can you do science? I was trained in science. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't, they don't know. have anything else I to don't, say. I don't know if this is necessarily a preparation thing. I do think I'm just going to call you Anthony. I think, <laughs> oh, what's up, girl? Whoa. <laughs> Clip that one. Look, <laughs> I, I already Jeff feel right. cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff is right. Like certain people are going to be allowed to ask certain questions. For sure. there, there's going to be a decorum because there's a trust there. I mean, we see it all the time, especially now that so many people have platforms. Mm -hmm. Then you'll see celebrities go to a friend over like someone who's been a seasoned interviewer because they understand that they understand where to cross, where not to cross, there's like a whole dance to it. For sure. So I think in that situation, and I don't remember there being a ton of fallout about the Laverne Cox question. Yeah, no, and wasn't. I think she followed up to say that she had had a conversation, I believe, with Jada about it, everything was okay. So I really, I think it might have to do with the relationships more than the preparation, because again, I've, I'll say it again. I've only done this a couple times, but it is like fast paced work. It's to have it's, people yeah. constantly coming at you and you're wanting to hit it out the park every time. There's all the preparation in the world. But like when you're talking about seconds, when some of these things are like they got to be inside in five minutes, that means that this per person gets like two minutes. And if they go three, then you get none. It's yeah. like it's very it's very choreographed fast. almost. Yeah, yeah interesting. Um, all right, I want to get talked about this. Is anyone here a Last of Us fan? Yes. I no. am. Me and Chris. All right. Not Sunday. Eric. Uh, I was on it for a little while. That you fell off, right? I fell off. The, the zombie. Too much Walking Dead ish. Listen, they you. had a house, they had an electrical fence with food, and you left. <laughs> See you later. I'm out too. Yeah. And a car. You, yeah. had, you had cheese and wine. And guns. And guns. All right. Yeah. Well, Sunday's finale of the hit HBO series, The Last of Us, brought in 8.2 million viewers, despite airing at the same time as the Oscars. The show is about the world being taken over by infected zombie like people. The first six episodes averaged more than 30 million viewers. That's actually more more than House of Dragons, which was another HBO hit that had an average of 29 million viewers over six episodes. So a new study says 58% of people believe a zombie apocalypse will occur in the next 30 years. And 11% actually think zombies already exist. Uh-oh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, what do you guys think about this, the numbers of it all happening? I do want to say that the, in, in this, The Last of Us, it's real. This could happen. There's a fungus and ants have been been eating this fungus in real life and it creates what they call a cordyceps and it comes out of the ant's head and they can still move and they walk like zombies so there is this thing happening in real time in the ant world life. in ant life okay so i mean but uh, i'm i'm sorry i'm stuck on the 58 percent of people <laughs> thanks for following that al because yeah. i was done <laughs> She's saying, I mean, basically, the, the, the fears with that show is that we, you know, we treat uh, the parasites and things in our body with, uh, with fungi, with, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Penicillin. With, so Antibiotic. We can, yeah, so we wouldn't be able to use that because that's what's in our body. So that's the overall fear of the show. But I, I think I'm more hung up on the fact that six out of ten people think that this is already, this is going to happen. And 10% think that there's already zombies here. Where? I, you know, I, I don't know if this is just all part of human beings. We all kind of want to be part of the apocalypse. It's a, if you think about everybody that's alive, end days, end times, it is a thing. It is a way that people sell their religion. It's Even the from the Mayan times, right. they it's had always, an ending of the world. Right, remember 2012, May 5th, right. remember that was supposed yeah. to be a thing? It's always been like this weird obsession with being here on the last days. You give me that look, it's like every religious text. The last text. day was Cinco de Mayo? Uh, yeah, when it 20, you remember there was yeah, a Yeah, the movie, Mayan calendar Mayan. when it ran yeah, out. But yeah. there was like, everybody thinks like the world's coming to an end, it's not. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> That I'm almost ended my life on Secret <laughs> of My Own. <laughs> bar in Los Angeles. Oh boy. All right, a man is suing Buffalo Wild Wings over their wild boneless chicken wings. All right, so the man is claiming that the wings aren't wings at all and are more like chicken nuggets. He's accusing the chain of false advertising because calling them boneless wings leads people to believe they're actually made with wing meat. Wing meat. It's a good band name, <laughs> uh, which they are not. So Buffalo Wild Wings responded to the lawsuit by tweeting, quote, it's true. Our boneless wings are all white meat chicken. Our hamburgers are contain no ham. Our buffalo wings are 0% buffalo. So what do we think? Do they have a court case? I think people need some more business. <laughs> like, you have too much time on your hands, sir. <laughs> uh, honestly, 
what are we doing? This is what we're taking. It's a money to grab. Court. It's a money grab for but sure. It seems like, like it's not gonna win. clogging the judicial system. Fair. Like, it, fair. Yeah. No, you're exactly right. This person believes in zombies. This is the people who believe in <laughs> Like seriously, these are the people and then companies have to acknowledge people like that right now. It's just like, we are in a crazy zombie-like time. I don't believe in zombies, but the times are so crazy that corporations have to acknowledge like this person that means nothing with this crazy idea and like getting lawyers involved and be like, does he have a case? Do we have to pay this guy out to make him go away? It's even crazy to fathom. But he kind of does have a little- No, he does not. They serve wings there. Right, they but, serve wings. Right, when you call it a wing or a wing and there's no wing meat, does it not have a case of false advertising? But I don't know. Why like, does it have an H in it? <laughs> I don't know. I yeah. like saying wing meat. <laughs> wing meat sounds fun. Uh, no, do, is there is there any way that that could be you had to settle because this guy is a Cape Point? I don't think so because I don't think that they invented the idea of calling it, you know, the boneless buffalo. I mean, I had that. There, there used to be called chicken tenders. But I think socially, we've all developed certain words that may not be exactly descriptive of the food, but that's just like socially how they're referred to. And when you hear boneless wing, you know what it is. It's kind of a silly term, but I don't think it's like able to be prosecuted and like run through our legal system. There is a point, Jeff, where I feel like, yes, he should appear before a judge, but he should sentence him to force him to enjoy his life. Like make him go no. have fun somewhere because this is, this is what happens when you whenever you want to litigate everything, when it's just something that can just be enjoyed and moved on. It's, it's a weird thing to focus on, but I think there's cases like this that do clog up our system on a daily basis. Wouldn't it be great like, if there was like a mini zombie apocalypse and it kind of got rid of some of these people? No, Jeffrey, And like the strong no. survive and we start over? <laughs> no. Yeah, but then you, you know might what I mean? see something that would mess you up. You'd be watching the game like, man, that zombie. Yeah, but I'm like, the buffalo guy, he just got eaten. <laughs> it's not so bad, you know what I mean?